If you clicked on this video, it's probably because of two main reasons. One, you're thinking, what the heck is a death pile? And is that illegal? Can he actually have a death pile? Is it just some bodies in his warehouse? No, it's not. A death pile uh, is just stuff you haven't sold that's waiting to be listed. And the second thing is, how much does Blake have stowed away in these bins? I've got four pallets full of 50-gallon bins of old inventory. Now, these right here, two of these are FBA returns because the listing got deleted. Um, it didn't have the compliance forms and I couldn't get them and this is a FBM return and the buyer said it doesn't work I tested it. She's a liar now these like the they're two-in-one scratch removers These are some DVDs all sorts of stuff that I bought over the course of the past like five years That I either bought at super cheap prices in bulk buys and I pick the good stuff out or something went wrong with it or I didn't have like my CD fixer. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. We're gonna go through all those reasons individually. In this instance, the buyer said the CD player doesn't work. Uh, she was lying, it happens a lot. Buyers oftentimes will just lie saying the item doesn't work. And they'll either send you back your original item because they just wanna return without paying return shipping, or they'll scam you and send back a broken item. I was not scammed on these things. It was just, you know, bad luck, I guess, with the listings being deleted and then that buyer saying, oh crap, I can't pay 50 bucks for this. Where's my money? I want it back. Happens all the time. It's just the cost of doing business. Uh, returns are part of the deal. So these, I'm actually gonna relist these on a different listing on Amazon. It's kind of crazy that they can do that, but there's more listings popping up every day. They got relisted, FBM. I'll use that same box for shipping, simple. This one, uh, I'm gonna test it. Like I said, it, it works, it works totally fine. Uh, so it's gonna get relisted. I hope this messy warehouse isn't like triggering you or whatever. I have a lot of my personal stuff here. It's just cluttered. Let's go through this box right here. Just of stuff that I have not listed. I've neglected this. Uh, luckily for me, I buy things very, very cheap. So I'm not like losing money or I'm major debt because I have all this crap I bought that I haven't listed. It's just I'm buying things for so cheap and I have been doing this for so long that I have accrued a massive death pile. So most of these items you're seeing here that I got out of return pallets, uh, and they were things either I just couldn't list because of brand gatings like that headband or that art of shaving product. Uh, and I didn't have the time or the business model at the time because when this occurred, I had a few employees and I had trained them in FBA and not eBay. So I couldn't easily make the transition from Amazon to eBay inventory wise. Now, since then, I've gone kind of back to a one man show where I can do all this stuff on my own. Uh, and I'm gonna be testing these things and listing everything here that you're seeing in the box yeah, everything here actually, uh, on eBay. None of this goes to Amazon, like Shore, the brand Shore. These might be fake, I have no clue. Uh, I'm gonna have to go through and test all this stuff. A lot of private label brands, I don't even mess with. A lot of these books, like Sarah Palin, America by Heart, that book is not worth any money at all. Uh, probably none of these books are. Some of these Great Lake stickers, I got these in a return palette a few years ago. The listing has since been deleted. Um, there's a whole bunch of copyright stuff with that that I don't even wanna get into. It's just, uh, I'll sell them on eBay as like generic Great Lake stickers. This Black's Law Dictionary, I could have sold that on Amazon back when I got it out of a book pallet three or four years ago, but there's some damage to it. So I pulled it aside to list on eBay and just never got around to it. Um, Lego stuff, same thing with brand restrictions. It's all here on this bin. There's more bins, I have lots of bins. So we're gonna go through all this stuff now and I'm gonna give you a, a basic idea of what it's all worth because I went through, made my spreadsheet, uh, and we'll see just how much money I have sitting in these boxes. And hopefully it inspires you uh, to go through your own death pile and pick your money out of those boxes or piles or your closet or whatever it is, because I know I'm not the only one. I'm probably the worst one, but it's not hard to get this stuff listed. Just go to your phone, you know, start taking pictures and it's gonna be really easy to list this stuff on eBay. I made my video a few days ago about how to make more money on eBay. And the one thing I always recommend is take your photos first Drop them on your computer and it's gonna make listing this stuff so much faster. You see what I just did? Just one picture of the front of that STE3RT, it's like a, a, a photography flash modulator, I don't know. I took the photo of that, one photo, and I'm gonna list it like that. And I'm filming the voiceover a day later. I've already gotten two offers of 15 bucks. I listed it for 19 bucks. Uh, I'm gonna hold out for a full sale price, but I'm just like saying like, just because it's in your death pile, or it's in your closet or whatever. You know, maybe you don't call it a death pile. Maybe I'm the macabre one of the group. Uh, but just because it's there does not mean it's not worth money. Part of this video is just like, oh, I can make a fun clickbait thumbnail with this topic. And part of it's also like, hey, if you're just getting started and you don't have any money to buy stuff, you probably have your stuff around the house. Trash like this, you know, trash in air quotes, 
that you can re easily resell. And maybe it's a damaged book. Maybe it's an old PlayStation you're missing the cords on. Maybe it's like an old GIF, the art of shaving, like you see in the bottom left corner, uh, GIF set. It could be any of that stuff. An old Harry Potter 12 cassette audio book, you know, with terrible box condition. This stuff is all going to sell. It might not sell for the most money. I might get like eight or nine bucks for this. But uh, it's all going to be profitable stuff because I already have it. I'm not going out and paying money for it. Would I buy any of this stuff? I would buy the PlayStation. I would buy the uh, Black's Law Dictionary. I would buy... Probably that's just it. Maybe the Shure headphones. I don't know, though. These Shure headphones are disgusting. I open them up, and they're covered in earwax. It's just... I didn't even mess with the, with the box back when I first got them uh, because I couldn't sell them on Amazon. So I was like, oh, I'll just put these in the, you know, TBD pile. Uh, which is not good. Let's check these out. Just disgusting. I don't know what happened. Why they're so gross. I should have been wearing gloves, to be totally honest with you. This is just disgusting, really gross, earwaxy. Uh, all the stuff's in there. I don't know how to tell if they're fake. I'm going to have to do some research online to figure out if I actually can sell these. So I'm going to omit these uh, from like my end total. Same with the PlayStation. Those two things need to be tested and, in this case, authenticated. And I don't know how to do that yet. If you want to follow along, if you like videos like this, uh, subscribe, like the video. And let me know in the comments if you want to see more stuff like this. More of like the behind-the-scenes, nitty-gritty, death pile stuff that every reseller has to deal with. Or if you're just like, oh, this is boring to me. I want to see you go to Walmart and buy all the Oreos. Whatever you want to see, I am happy to oblige. So, barring the PlayStation and the Shure headphones... Everything you see here is either going to be listed on eBay, on my store, or thrown away. So if you want to see this stuff, or watch it, or follow it, just look it up on eBay, and you'll probably find my listing, because guess what? I have this same, like, gray background for it all. Uh, if I can't sell the headphones, I will definitely part out the manual and that kind of stuff. Not for a lot of money, but just, like, as an exercise in uh, using every bit of the animal. <laughs> Or in this case, the headphones. Again, I want to be totally clear. Probably it makes more sense just to throw away some of this stuff, but not everyone's in that same position as me. So we're going to go through and talk about every last item. Again, these two-in-one, they're like Duplicolor is the brand. I couldn't see an expiration date on these, but again, just from buyer feedback, I know that they're getting crusty, and I'm not going to risk getting negative feedback over a $9 sale. That's just crazy. Uh, this Art of Shaving Kit, I kind of looked out on this. It's lemon essential oil. Um, these are outdoor masters, just basic uh, frameless goggles. Nothing too fancy there. Everything here is uh, probably going to be in like the 10 to $20 range. I'm going to keep this actually. I'm going to keep this scale for no good reason. I think it's kind of cool. And you can always use more scales in your warehouse just in case. What if mine breaks? What if I have to weigh a giant fish? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep this here also because I probably can't get more than like 10 bucks for it. This talking calculator, it audio works, but when you play it, or zero, when you put zero, numbers in, I mean, one, they don't always show eight, up. There's some one, sort of error with the seven, ribbon. Eight, nine, so what I did is I unscrewed the machine. I tried to, uh, what you can do, and this works zero, like 10% of the time. If you're good with a, um, like a soldiering gun, you can reapply the ribbon that connects the LCD screen to the, like the motherboard. I'm not good with that. So I just took a heat gun because sometimes this works. It just reheats that tape there and you can press it back down with like, I'm using a small note card. No, unfortunately the speaker's right there. It's going to screw it up. I'm, I shouldn't even be doing this, but I'm going to just to say like, Hey, in some cases, if you have like a graphing calculator and the same issue occurs, you can sometimes do this as like a last resort. It didn't work this time. I didn't think it would, but just to show you guys uh, some of the ways you can like hack, you know, <laughs> little success, how you can hack your way to fixing broken items. And yet you see it's still not working. Awesome. Okay, here's the last item before we go back to my house and I go through a rundown of all the items, including the profit I'll make off of them. And there's a lot to talk about with this <laughs> individual Sylvania under cupboard CD radio. First of all, it's not packaged correctly. Back in 2017, when I initially FBA'd this, I could have probably got a reimbursement if it broke in transit. That is not the case today. Secondly, uh, it was marked as hazmat by I have no idea who. It's kind of the wild west out there, or at least it used to be, and you could hijack listings. Uh, sometimes the bots went crazy, misinterpreting words. I have no idea. It was marked as hazmat. It got sent back to me. 
uh, or, or stranded and then got sent back to me. All sorts of crazy stuff, and I've had it in my warehouse for a few years. It's not worth very much at all. It's very old, it's obsolete technology. We'll see if it works. I'm gonna test it to make sure it still plays and everything. And assuming it does, and right here you're gonna see, yes, it does work. It turns on, it plays CDs, it plays the radio. Uh, we're gonna sell it for 15 bucks plus shipping. And I'm doing that because shipping on this could be so expensive. If I were to ship this to like somewhere in rural Oregon, I'd sell it for less with free shipping than I'd pay in shipping. It's crazy. So 15 bucks plus shipping, Hopefully it sells to someone in my region for like, it's gonna be like eight or 10 bucks if I go to like Ohio or Michigan. But beyond that, it really isn't worth shipping because it's just so old and so cheap. Okay, back to my house now. Okay, now the part you are all really concerned about, the profit. I went through, made a spreadsheet, and if you wanna find these items on eBay, just look them up. I'm using basically the same title. So starting off that Sony CD player. And again, the echo here, I can hear it, it's bugging me too, but like I said, I'm moving. Okay, so the Sony CD player, the original base one that got returned for being broken, but wasn't actually broken. I'll sell it for 45 bucks. It'll be about eight bucks in shipping on Amazon, uh, $7 fees. I'll make about 30 bucks off of that. The two Miss Pac-Man games should sell for 70 bucks a piece. And you're saying 70 bucks, that's crazy. It's not crazy. Uh, that's the going rate for them. They don't sell very often. Sales rank is like 300,000. But if you see these and you're okay waiting four to six months for a sale, go for it. I'm gonna FBM them. They're gonna stay in the warehouse. Next, that Canon STE3 RT manual. It's a photography implement accessory. I'll sell it for 1995. Shipping is gonna be 289 because it goes media mail. It'll be about three bucks in eBay fees. So after that, I'm making about $14. There were no comps on this, but the other active listing was from England and it was like 30 bucks, including shipping. So I think at 20 bucks, I'll be okay. And I've already gotten two offers at 15 bucks. So there is a demand for it. Uh, American Heart by Sarah Palin. It's worth $5. I'll make maybe 50 cents. Off it, 71 cents. Um, I, honestly, it's not really worth listing. Same with The Idiot's Guide to Getting Published. That was the second book you might have saw. Black's Law Dictionary, the leather-bound one. The low end for that is like $75. The high end is $150. Even though I have damage, it's still pretty clean. So I put it at 99 bucks, free shipping. Uh, it'll cost me $8 to ship probably. At 100 bucks sale fee, I'll be paying about 15 bucks in fees. You can estimate 12%, you can estimate 15%. It doesn't really matter as long as you're just being consistent. I'm going high end and estimating 15% because I just wanna, I wanna have my bases covered when I make these videos. After all that's taken care of, it's uh, 76.96 in profit. The Lego mini figures. Now I've heard some rumbling about what you can and can't say on Amazon, or on eBay I mean, about mini figs. Uh, if it's not Lego brand, I don't think you can say the word minifig. I'm not totally sure, but it's a Lego minifigure set of three. That's what the packaging says. I'm going to go off of that. Uh, I'll sell it for $19.95. The issue with this is there's a whole bunch of similar minifig sets that don't have the same people in them. So I don't know if I'm charging too much or if the demand for, because it's cops and it's a fireman. The demand might be there to sell it for 20 bucks. I don't know. But at that 1995 estimated listing, I think I'll get for it, uh, it's gonna be about, let's see, four bucks to ship, very light, and I'll pay about $3 in fees, so I'll make $12.96. A lot of these end in 96 or 76. That's how math works. So the art of shaving, lemon essential oils, uh, I'm gonna charge 40 bucks for that. The unscented goes for 25. There are no lemon essential oils listed currently, uh, not in the same packaging, uh, and there were no sold listings in the past 90 days. So I think 40 bucks, kind of on the high end, but I think eventually it will sell. It'll be about five bucks to ship that. It weighed about 12 ounces. Uh, it'll be six bucks in fees. That leaves me with 28.96 in profit. The beard shaper that you saw, it's just, like I said, man, it's junk, private label junk. I'll sell it for eight bucks. It'll cost three fifty to ship, a buck nineteen in fees, and I'll make about three twenty-five in profit afterwards. That Blom Yoga headband—they are notoriously picky about their brand being sold on Amazon. It'll go on eBay. 
Uh, I'll sell it for, let's see, about $18. It'll cost $3.15 to ship, and when it's all said and done, we're looking at about $12 profit. The remainder of the stuff is not very notable. All I wanna talk about really is the 32 Duplicolor 2-in-1 Scratch Painters and the Sylvania Under Cabinet uh, Radio. The Sylvania Under Cabinet Radio, again, 15 bucks plus shipping, I'll make 10 bucks on that. And the Duplicolor uh, Old Stock Paint Scratch Fixers, I'm gonna list at 40 bucks. Uh, it's gonna be about 10 bucks to ship, I think, I could be wrong. And then it's gonna be about $6 in fees leaving me about 24 bucks total profit. Now, I have the spreadsheet, again, linked below. You can check this stuff all out. If you wanna find the items on eBay, just look it up on eBay. Uh, and my total profit, not gross, but total profit after shipping, after fees, is gonna be about $300. $300 from my death pile. How much money do you have in your death pile? Probably a lot. Get listing, and I'll see you guys next time.